Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of Exploring Electronics. In the first episode, we learned mostly about sources of electrical energy, like batteries. So what about electronic components that use energy? Any component not genera generating energy is consuming it, kind of like my dog. Food and rent aren't free, God. He needs to make himself useful. Ah, well, nah, just kidding. His job is to be cute and he totally has that down. <laughs> anyway, all other electronic components that don't generate electrical energy are using electrical energy. We can think of these components as sinks, since they use electrical energy to do something, and hopefully something that's useful, like letting us illuminate a dead tree in our living room without burning our house down, making candles safer one light at a time. <laughs> There are tons of different types of components that convert electrical energy into something else. So for example, motors give us physical energy, like for our car. Fans give us cool air and sometimes motion, like wind turbines. And lights give us visible electromagnetic radiation. Oh my god, wait, it's okay, it's just light, like a rainbow, yay! <laughs> so even though electricity might seem like magic some of the time, like seriously magnets, what the heck, the transfer of energy doesn't happen without losing some of the original energy. You can think of it like trying to carry water in your hands. Fewer and smaller gaps in your fingers mean you'll lose less water, but it's pretty much impossible to carry the water a few feet without losing at least some, if not all of it, unless you're a ninja or something like that. A much easier way that'll save your sanity is to grab the water in a bucket, which has a lot fewer gaps that the water can fall through. So electrical energy is similar. Some materials are better at helping us move electricity from one point to another. These materials are called conductors. No, 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 not like that. Like copper, gold, and silver, materials that conduct electricity well. Even though conductors of music are very important, we're talking about conductors of electricity. So these materials have fewer obstacles that the charges bump into so that you don't lose too much of your electrical energy in your circuit. So kind of like this demonstration where the ping pong balls represent the charges. They have little faces on them because they're happy charges. And uh, this circle represents a circuit of conductive material. So if I release them, whoa, oh my gosh, one went the wrong way, no! <laughs> anyway, uh, you can see that there are some obstacles in here. And though even though they didn't um, all hit the obstacles, um, they still occasionally bump into things as they're going around the circuit. And so as they bump into these obstacles, they lose some of their energy uh, as they're going from the source, our battery, to the sink, our component, and then back to the source. So when you want to share electrical energy with someone or something else, you want to minimize these energy losses so that your friend, or well, the component, gets the right amount of energy. You wouldn't want to take half or sorry, you wouldn't want to take, hopefully, a whole cookie out of the bag and hand it to your friend and then maybe have half of it mysteriously eaten. Uh, that's just rude, you know, geez. But sometimes we do want this energy loss, like if it's the last cookie and you're totally going to eat half of that. So in the case of electrical lights, they use special filaments called, uh, sorry, special materials called filaments that cause so many charge collisions that the filament gets insanely hot and it glows, kind of like a tiny miniature version of the sun encased in a vacuum. Ah, it's so cool. <laughs> so we can use this knowledge to control the electrical energy in our circuit and do some seriously awesome stuff, like build an amplifier. Yeah, oops, backwards, like that. So cool. Um, we can also use it to do all sorts of sensing applications, like build a soil moisture sensor, or a hazardous gas monitor, or make an EL wire costume for Halloween. Woohoo! So, okay, we know why we need to use wires made of conductive material to transfer electrical energy from our sources to our sinks without losing too much energy along the way. And we also know that we can adjust the amount of electrical energy in a circuit by adding obstacles to the charges. Because remember, they're pretty lazy. They're happy, but they're lazy. <laughs> so even conductors have some obstacles. If we increase the length of the wire, our charges will lose more energy along the way. Um, and uh, we can also add in components made from insulating material. So that's actually just what a resistor is. Woohoo! like this. If I were to put a resistor in my circuit, if I can pick up all these cardboard pieces, we go poop. That's kind of like a resistor. So resistors are electronic components specifically designed to help us control the flow of electrical energy in a circuit. So how do, we, how do they actually control the electrical energy? Like specifically, what do they do? 
In other words, what happens to the voltage and the current of our battery if we add in a resistor? Oh my god, check out part two.